Welcome back to my layout. So, I am uh, without my hot, hot wire cutter and uh, decided to uh, put a little bit of a nice little profile edge to here. This probably is uh, maybe higher than what I wanted, but um, it's actually easier to chop it down than it is to add to it. So I just kind of started um, going to town. Uh, speaking of, you know, this stuff, this is uh, the same uh, peak and foam that I put down here as the base. Now this stuff's one and a half inch thick and um, the only reason I'm using it is because it's what I had. Uh, I definitely wouldn't recommend uh, using it for this type of purpose though. It's, it's actually a little too thick for this. It's, it's even a little too thick for my hot wire cutter. So theoretically, if I wanted to, I could actually, uh, I could actually snap this and use it as a profile section, you know, here, over here, or even at the other end. It, you know, it doesn't matter. You can kind of just reverse it. Ah. In case you're wondering, this uh, this particular method, this is all the, uh, like I said, the, the standard uh, Woodland Scenics um, method of doing this with the subterrain. Uh, system, I, I, you know, they have a, there's a video on YouTube, uh, which basically describes uh, a lot of those techniques that I'm doing right here. It's, I'm just kind of following what's already kind of out there, so I'm not like reinventing the wheel. Uh, so the last video here, I, I was making my tunnel. Uh, that is now all done, and basically now I'm building the, uh, I just kind of have this set in here to kind of get a, an idea, but you know, now I'm going to basically be working on building the top of the tunnel, um, shaping this little mountainous area right in here and uh, working my way on that. Like I said, definitely this is a little higher than I want. I need to put something over here on this edge. I'm definitely not going to be able to use that um, half inch stuff all the way down here because this or at one and a half inch because this gets a little tight to the edge here, so that doesn't really matter, you know. But, nah, it's coming along pretty good. Um, uh, in my tools video, I was talking about the various different tools um, that be helpful to you uh, have. Uh, one of them, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned or not. I don't think I did, but a hot wire cutter is a, is a good tool to have. Um, this one here, I've actually... I've had this thing for years. Um, I had to do a school project um, back when I was uh, uh, for my graphic design degree. And uh, basically I needed to do some sort of uh, carving in some foam and I bought this a long time ago. So uh, to my surprise it still worked. So. All right. So I'm going to let this sit somewhere and it let it cool. Uh, find a safe spot to set. Oh, there we go. This is a safe spot to set this. There we go. Because that um, definitely have to be careful uh, with the kids around stuff like that. Um, that little that uh, wire implement. Filament that's inside the thing. I think stays hot for a while, and that will cause a very nasty burn. Okay, so before I move on with uh, any more, I'm just going to I'll, I'm going to grab the camera, and then I'll zoom in. I'll show you the. I did put a little bit more uh, touches on the tunnel area here, and I just kind of want to show you what I did here. So, hang on. Okay, so here's the tunnel area here, and as you can see, I put, I added just like a little bit of uh, some color detail to this, uh, to this stone, so it's just not looking just like gray stone, you know, I mean, if you look in real world, you just don't see gray stone, and I kind of came in here, and uh, I found out even with the top on, you could still see fairly much up into the track here, so I had to cover up that white, rest of that white. 
all in all, I'm actually pretty pleased with the way it came out. I mean, considering this is, you know, considering I'm an amateur, you know, I, I can't really complain. Let me put some of this foam on the top here and kind of get a, a gist of what it will look like. So, I'm not sure how well you can see, but that's kind of how it will look like as if you're train going down the tunnel. <laughs> Not bad. So, that's kind of where I'm at for right now. And uh, I'll, uh, I'm going to be working away on this uh, mountain some here. So, that's kind of uh, that's kind of the part I'm working on now. And then I'm going to take that down into this little valley area right here. And there we go. Got ourselves the uh, nice makings of a... Uh, Nice old mountain in the tunnel. Um, coming along pretty good. I'm actually quite pleased. Uh, not 100% sure still yet on how I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm thinking of building this up out maybe a little, but I was thinking more of a sheer rock face here. I'm not uh, not 100% sure <laughs> yet on this, but that's looking pretty good. Um, for as far as this piece here, what I, all I really did with this was just uh, I just uh, you know cut it with my uh, Exacto knife and just snapped it you know scored and snapped and it actually uh, came out pretty good. A little little rough on these corners here, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. You'll I'm going to be carving a lot, and trimming and adding and sculpt and molding and doing everything else uh, on this thing still to get it the uh, landform I want. Uh, right now, this is just uh, pinned in place with uh, some foam nails. Um, and I'm going to probably keep it that way until I actually get... Uh, I'm going to take some other uh, foam pieces and... Uh, it's like I'm going to take... Take pieces like this, just small little chibits, and then I'll probably you know, work them in. I'll probably take pieces like this and I'll cut them and carve them and kind of lay it around and sort of build a little bit of contour to land. Uh, mainly you want to do stuff like that uh, so you're not using up a ton of sculpt mold. Um, probably not going to do any paper here. Uh, you see the little, uh, what they call paper pillows. So I'm not going to do that probably up here because it's, um, I don't want this to be a big, huge landform. So definitely be doing some of that down around this area though so here we go that's where we're at now and um you know, next uh, we'll be uh I'll be adding a little bit to this and uh hopefully uh by the end of this video we'll be putting some uh, plaster cloth on here so all right so uh just working on some of the uh rough uh landforms here and whatnot um like i said this is just know what it is just the basic rough landforms um a lot of additional work going to be coming in here um so i'm kind of just working right here i'm not sure how well you can see the top here but working a little bit on this uh it's a small little like uh, i guess you call it a little creek bed river bed whatever i'm trying to put up here not 100 sure if i like it. it might be actually a little bigger than what I had actually intended uh, to put here so I'm sort of fuss with it this is just a couple pieces of foam that I have cut down and what I did is I started sort of sculpting the edge a little bit so there's just not a lot of material I have to work with and I'm just using the uh, sure foam shaver and just scrap you know scraping up against it it's taking a lot of that material and now I'm kind of just placing it here on the top here just to get a, a general idea of how I want this river to flow. And then uh, I'll come in back here, take out some of the material that I need to make it all work and so forth. I'm um, not sure if you can see. Uh, let me turn the camera. But so I sort of 
trimmed this area down from where it was because, uh, you know, needless to say, that wasn't the way I had intended it to look. And this this is actually more of the profile I was looking for in this area, and then this will blend right in with the, the track roadbed a little bit. And I cleaned up this sidewall here a little bit as well. So this is more along the lines of the profile that I was thinking of right here. So making progress slowly and surely. Uh, as soon as I get the... Uh, the basic uh, shapes and stuff down then I'm gonna come in and I'll probably uh, do something down in here for where the riverbed is going to be down in here uh, I still got to put in the roadways and make sure that that all works so you know where I plan on putting roadways in um, then uh, be uh, adding in some uh, newspaper pillows you know and Putting that in there, and at that point in time, we're looking at uh, probably doing some plaster cloth work. So that's where we're at. Okay, so we got some of the land formations in down in this area. Um, move my laptop out of the way here so you can get a little bit better view. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Uh, <laughs> but as you can see, I got uh, some landforms uh, in here. Um, Kind of got a diagram here where my waterfall is going to be and kind of made the, the little area here where my pond is going to be. It, I think I made my pond a little bigger than I wanted to. Um, let, me, I'll, let me grab the camera and I'll zoom in over here. So you can kind of see how uh, what I was just describing. Um, got this land form and this is all going to get coarse covered you know with scenery and you know whatnot um but you see over there that's kind of where i'm playing i'm putting my little um it's going to be a log pond and now it looks like almost like a log lake uh, it's a little bigger than i think i wanted it to be but that's okay i can uh, i can make that smaller and just with some sculpt mold and some things like that and decide how i want it and i can also put in more foam to kind of fill in the gaps and whatnot and that's not a big deal. Just wanted to get the basic idea of where some of this was at. Now I'm kind of working on this area right in here. And basically I was uh, grabbing my laptop here to pull up my track plan. This is my revised track plan. And I uh, was just trying to figure out, you know, this road here, basically. Um, trying to figure out how I want it ran. You know, it looks like it's fairly close to this track here, right in this area. So kind of, you know, uh, I can probably fill up some dimensions if I want to get, you know, to the detail, but I don't think I really want to get that detailed. I guess one of the things that I do know is that it connects up over here, and I do know I have a building right here. Well, as you can see from here... I'm not sure if that's going to work, so uh, I might have to tweak this up a little bit some more. But that's the fun of it. All right, moving on. Alrighty, so a uh, lot's been going on with this particular scene. Um, I've actually got uh, uh, quite a bit done. Um, uh, basically, I'm going to grab the uh, camera off my uh, tripod again and just kind of walk around a little bit of this uh, particular area that I've been pretty much modeling. Um, so this particular area is going to be my um, sawmill. It's, it's essentially a sort of a modern, a little more modern, um, going from lumber to finished lumber, you know. Yeah. Anywho. Uh, we got the sawmill, we got our planning mill, some storage shed, we're going to be putting in a little powerhouse here, some sawdust burners, as well as some other little outbuildings all in this general area. So uh, without, uh, furthermore, it's, uh, the best way to actually see it is grab the camera and we'll, I'll focus on the areas I'm working on and uh, basically show you where we're at right now. Okay. So this, uh, you know, we, we showed you some, a lot of this already before, but, uh, you know, we got, you know, uh, one of some of the things I did is I got this profile board done here on this outside edge. 
and as you can see it pretty much runs all the way to the to the back I got to the very back part here I had to put a small little piece right in here I'm not sure if uh, matter of fact I, I can pretty much guarantee you that back corner is not going to be that high um, I actually have to shave that down some I, I like the uh, I like the I, the thought but I think with the track and stuff that's going to be too much of a transition you know that's it's one thing I had to uh, get used to is the uh, transitions and things like that um so right here we have the track uh, if you're kind of wondering what this is this is actually the road uh, coming in to my logging area so the road's going to come in it's going to go over this section of track right here it's going to come down here all the way down here and then it's going to come all the way down through here and come out onto this this uh where this white foam is here is sort of the flat area we also have a section right here you know it's going to transition down to here um you notice that um while I don't I don't have the buildings uh, yet for this area I do know what buildings I'm going to be putting here at least at least for the most part so I can uh, what I did is on uh, uh, Walther's uh, website uh, they give you the uh, footprints and so I took the footprint dimensions and I put them out onto some paper and I sort of cut them out so that way I kind of know how everything's going to go. Like I know here's where the sawmill is. That's going to be the uh, the pickup coming out of the log pond into the sawmill. Uh, we have the powerhouse right there. Over here is going to be uh, where the uh, sawdust burner is going to be. Then we have the planning mill, and this is a, a dust collector. Then we have the shed, which is a shed is just nothing more than the storage coming out of the planing mill. And then uh, up here, you have the, that's the log pond. It's going to be the waterfall. That's going to be the sort of little, uh, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say mountain. I'm going to say big hillside. <laughs> and we're going to have a little bit of a sheer cliff here. I'm going to actually take some, uh, uh, I'm going to use some hydro cow and uh, some rock castings and I'm going to put those rock castings out there so it's going to be sort of a rocky cliff coming off the end um, and then you can already see I started to uh, start making some uh, some paper pillows and I'm going to kind of fill in some of this other areas here uh, where I can and that's just basically uh, transitioning you know from here you know over to where I have my uh, stuff and all that's at so that's what that's all going to be so I'm going to be making some paper pillows and just basically did this transitioned so that's essentially where I'm at now so once I get the paper pillows in place I'm going to take some uh, tape tape it down get that somewhat in where I want to uh, most of this stuff you know the foam and everything all glued in pretty good uh, a few places here that I just glued in. I have to remove uh, some of the stick pins. Then, um, uh, once I get that all ready, the next step after that would be doing the foam. Uh, foam. Duh. Uh, doing the plaster cough. So, get around the pole here. I'll show you how it looks from this angle. It kind of gives you an idea. This will look a lot better once it's plaster clothed up because it'll actually show you ain't got all these void areas then and so all right so um essentially that's where i'm at and i'm gonna go keep going to town here with the uh newspaper pillows so uh once i get all the newspaper pillows down in place and get that all set to go uh we'll catch back up then and uh, we'll go on to the next step which is basically the uh plaster cloth um, since I'm, at, I'm uh, doing the newspaper pillow thing, um, so what exactly is a newspaper pillow? Uh, it's a very good question. Um, I, I, I know what it is by seeing some different uh, Woodland Scenics uh, videos. 
Uh, I've also seen other people's videos where they do it. Essentially, it's nothing more than just a, really, it's just a crumble of ball of newspaper. But um, depending on what you're trying to do and what uh, level of the contour you need, you know, that could be a small crumble or a big crumble. But what you're doing is you're starting with a, a sheet of newspaper and you're just crumbling it in towards the center. until you get uh, what's the equivalent of like a little pillow and then you can kind of stack these where you need them. So that's a newspaper pillow. <laughs> Gotta make a bunch of those. <laughs> okay so pretty much got the uh, newspaper uh, wads pretty much uh, all around this area um, making up the uh, contour of the land um, yeah not too too bad I, I can tell you right now if you uh, decide to do something similar to what I'm doing um, don't use painters tape it's the only tape I have laying around here uh, stuff doesn't want to stick to anything, which is by design, you know, so it's designed to peel off easily, but it's it's hard to get this to be taped down, um, having a lot of issues with the, the uh, painter's tape, uh, basically um, pulling up and then, you know, it's, it's just a pain in the bottom, so as you can see. Um, uh, so probably do a little futzing with it and then uh, basically at this point in time it's on to uh, doing the uh, plaster clothing, which we've pretty much already seen, but I'll show you what it looks like after that's all done. So ready to go. So uh, about two hours later, give or take, um, five giant rolls of plaster cloth and uh, I'm still not done. <laughs> I actually ran out of plaster cloth. I didn't have enough to, uh, to actually finish it but um, I, uh, I'm going to grab the camera just to show you where it is right now. Um, it's, it's probably good enough uh, where it is um, without me putting any more plaster cloth because uh, uh, the stuff that I needed to get covered with the plaster cloth, it's covered. So, um, so I'm going to grab the camera and walk around and uh, show you how it looks right now. Okay, looks white. <laughs> and um, so it, it's starting to uh, it's starting to take shape and form. Not sure how well the uh, camera's uh, picking up that, but. Uh, this is actually uh, pretty solid already. Um, this stuff dries uh, very quickly. Um, it doesn't take that much time to set up. Uh, as you can see, I still got some uh, bare foam spots. What, what I might do with that is um, I can actually just uh, mix up some hydrocol um, real quick and just give a quick smooth down. Um, with the... Uh, with these uh, uh, plaster cloth uh, sheets, they actually recommend using uh, two layers of this. Uh, right now, this is just one layer. So you can kind of get an idea uh, of how far this stuff actually goes as far as coverage. Um, like I said, these are the, uh, these are the Scenic Express, uh, what they call the giant roll, they're big roll. So I think it's 15 foot roll. Um, and uh, basically, um, I went through five of them uh, just to cover what I got here. Uh, so it doesn't actually uh, stretch by any by you know means, but uh, you know it, I'm like I said, I'm fairly uh, pleased with the results at least uh, to this point so far. Um, up here, uh, this looks pretty flat. 
um, and that's by design. We're going to uh, um, going to basically make some uh, rock molds, and um, I wanted to cover that as best as I could with the uh, with the uh, plaster cloth because the uh, stones actually stick better to it. So I figured it'd stick better than trying to stick to that plastic. Alrighty, so that is where we're at now. Um, I pretty much this is going to conclude uh, this video. Uh, next video will be focusing on the uh, rock molds. Um, also, probably be coming in here and doing some. Uh, like I said, I'll probably do. Uh, I'll probably. I'm not sure if I'm going to buy any more uh, the plaster cloth or not, but I may just come in here with some uh, hydrocal and uh, fill in some of the thin spots and so forth like that. Up in this area here, not sure if I like this crevice here or not. Uh, if I don't, I can just fill that in with some sculpt mold. So, either way, there we go. Uh, thanks for watching and to the next video.